We have completed the enrollment of patients into our STAR study, so it has taken quite a while. The enrollment was a challenge because we had so many patients with little stability in their health and we had unfortunately a very high number of patients who did not get successfully through the completion of the screening process and did not qualify for the real in, uh, entry into the study. But those patients who then entered into the study, we can say that up to date, 90% of those patients made it through the six months duration of the study and of those patients who completed the six months again 90 percent chose to go on in the open label uh, treatment that tells us that it was absolutely right by us not to compromise on the inclusion uh, criteria and to only take those patients into the study who lived up to all the inclusion parameters and requirements those patients who make it are very solid and good well-performing patients uh, that is the key uh, change, so this study has completed enrollment and we can now predict that in Q4 of this year, for the first time ever, a company will produce data from a potentially pivotal study in Red Syndrome. That means in our case that if that study should come out positive, then as per discussions with the regulatory bodies in the US and Europe, we have a fair chance to see this drug be the first drug being approved for treatment of Red Syndrome. That's good news to the patients and the families, very importantly. The other uh, highlight I want to make is that, as we did present in our R&D day on October 31st here in New York City, we do have first readout, not from the study naturally, but from those first 100 patients who made it into the study, we reported the so-called baseline data. And it was very important for us and the community to note that in this uh, research, which was giving for the first time qualitative and quantitative data on breathing abnormalities, we saw that different from past teaching and different from the understanding from the so far from the natural history study, we see a worsening of those patients over lifetime in all key features of Red Syndrome. While prior belief was that breathing, for example, would get better by age, we have shown objectively it gets worse. Uh, and it goes so far if we talk about the oxygen saturation uh, in those patients, which is a very important parameter, usually we say that if oxygen saturation goes below 90%, those patients will get into trouble. We have been able to show that these patients are up to 48 minutes of the hour at oxygen saturation levels of less than 90%. So we have shown that this disease is far worse and breathing abnormalities are far more negatively impacting the patients and the families than the prior belief was. And that obviously creates a lot of hope in us and in the patients that our drug could improve the life of those patients and their families and we could show the results in Q4 of this year. Yeah, what we can tell you is that this study, the way it is designed, remember it's a, uh, it's a double-blind placebo-controlled study, global study, US, Europe, Asia, Australia, 14 study centers. Uh, it is low-dose, high-dose placebo. Uh, it comes with an objective endpoint, which is reduction of number of apneas in those patients and the performance of those girls is measured by a fully automatic validated bell system. So the design of the study is as sophisticated as it could ever be. Say that we, we saw a lot of support by the advocacy groups and we have interacted very closely with them because we needed to understand uh, from them and the patients and the parents how the disease impacts them and we wanted to design and that goes back now a number of years we wanted to design it the study the, the study in a way uh, that it really makes a difference has a meaning for those patients and their parents so it has been a very close interaction since uh, and I have to say the reaction was very positive, especially when we did present those baseline data. We got a lot of positive feedback uh, saying that, okay, we need to update potentially the, the lessons learned in the past by this first uh, objective evidence that has been provided ever uh, on the premium abnormalities in Red Syndrome. Uh, the other thing I would like to mention is that while we originally started our program at 
girls at the age of 13 years and older. And there was a lot of feedback that the promise of the drug that we are developing would be much uh, bigger, or larger, more important in the younger kids because the hope is that if this drug works it can benefit and delay potentially the brain abnormalities or the damages in the brain uh, and reduce them. Uh, now we have been able to include patients to age of as low as four years in the study as it went on. So that was very much appreciated also by the patient organizations and the parents because that is adding to the hope uh, on the benefits this drug could do on the patients.